Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Getting Started with Rendering and Shading with Mantra Houdini. Uh, this is Rise Works, and in this video, I really wanted to talk about creating attributes, propagating those attributes from the uh, geometry level to the shader and material level, and how we can control, in our case, uh, the particle color and roughness using those attributes that we just created. So let's get started. As a final thing, I think we should talk about propagating attributes from your geometry to the materials. So I have a setup. I will enable display point so you can see it better. I have this kind of um, particle flow going from left to right or right to left, depending on your personal preference. Nothing special. I just created a curve, for example, the curve created a poly wire, um, moved it around a bit. Actually, I think we can move around it a bit more. Uh, then I convert it to VDB and back again. So it just, you know, creates a, a better geometry. Then I made the ISO offset and scattered the point inside. Next up, I sorted the points based on the proximity on the X axis, uh, negative 0.01, you could actually make it like negative five, whatever. Uh, my, I made this to make my attribute VAP actually computes the numbers of the points divided by the point number. So basically my attribute VAP is consisting of one very trivial setup. Uh, the number of points is dividing the point number. So what is happening is that we are resulting, so, uh, any points that are on the left will be number, let's say thousand. So a thousand deleted, um, divided by thousand will be one, which results in white. Here, the point will be number 500. I'll press the D, go into the background and make the background dark so we can see better. And I will disable our grid object so you can see the colors a bit, a bit more obvious. So everything that was like Let's say we have a thousand points. Any point that was on the left was number thousand, delete by thousand one. Uh, here numbers are starting numbers are starting from zero, as you can see. Uh, number four, number forty-six, one hundred seventeen. So basically these numbers divided by total amounts of uh, our points obviously results in numbers that are very low and are very close to zero and going to the left, they are becoming more and more white. This is the very basic setup. Now, what do we have is that this setup, this division result is getting fed in two different exports of the attributes, one of which being color, as indicated by CD. If I uh, delete this connection, as you will see, uh, possibly nothing happening because we need to uh, update the VAP, but whatever. Uh, so one, one, uh, one of which is being fed into the CD and the other is being uh, fed into the parameter RO. Uh, I named this RO to make the roughness propagate into our materials. So this is a bit all confusing, but it gets colorful <laughs> uh, when I create the ramp you know how ramp works at this point, so nothing spectacular here. Um, I get the attribute CD that we have defined in the attribute VAP, and I make anything that was black into the turquoise, and anything that was white, I made this into this um, cyberpunk pink, you know. Uh, finally, I give my points some scale. Uh, Otherwise, they will not render. So let's see how that looks. And spoiler alert, possibly this is how it looks. Or maybe not. I'm not sure if we have, yeah. Uh, this is how it looks. So if I go back to our P scale, by the way, if you are rendering some geometry and you don't know what is going on because maybe you have bought a car, right? Some Someone modeled a car and you opened the car and there is some uh, there are some spheres rendering and you're not sure what's happening. So basically 
Two ways of disabling the spheres. First, create an attribute P scale and make the value of zero, which in our case will nuke all our um, spheres. Because uh, the points, if they don't have anything copied to them, will render spheres. Unless you go to render, uh, where is it? Geometry, render points as, says spheres, says circles. Uh, actually, we can no point rendering. Again, this nukes our points. I will, I will enable our points back. So basically, yeah, this is if you're in, um, importing some geometry and it looks weird and some spheres starting to pop out, you're like, what, what is going on? Uh, possibly the best way would be just disable those rendering of spheres here in the ge geometry rendering tab. No point rendering. Okay, back to our attribute. So P scale, if I make it 0 0.1. Uh, all the spheres become much, much more fat. If we make it 0 0.003, for example, they become really small. I think 0 0.01 is fine. Okay, this is good. Let's create a principal shader as per, uh, as per usual. Principal shader and drag and drop it to our points since it's basic geometry. And as you will see in a second, um, something will happen. And what happened is uh, the colors that were on the points are getting multiplied by this number. So essentially, if you don't want any multiplication to happen, you either make this white or propagate the attributes, importing them from the sub context into the material context. If th this doesn't make any sense, give me a second, I'll explain what's happening. So to disable reading the attributes altogether, we will disable use the point color. And everything naturally became white. Next up, uh, to showcase better what's happening with our points, I'll make the metallic of one and roughness of one. So we clearly see what's happening. Okay, everything is very rough, very, very rough metallic. Now, to get our attributes into the materials, what we can use is bind, bind, this, which will help us import our attributes. So as we know, uh, if we go back, we can uh, middle mouse here or press the I and we see four point attributes, one of which CD, which is three floats, color, three floats are vector. The P attribute, which is again, three floats, starts for position. Then there is the parm underscore RO, which is a float, not a vector, just one float. And the P scale, again, just one float. We will use our CD vector, three floats, and PARM RO stands for roughness. In our case, again, you can name it all you want. I just named it in the attribute VOP, the PARM RO. I use the binds but in this case i use bind export so i connected this inputs to bind export and this what creates our additional attribute i go back to our material and here we'll name it cd stands for color diffuse which is an actual attribute in our geometry and if i now connect this to our base color nothing good will happen. Why? Because the CD attribute should be three floats vector. And now we are getting our colors back. Now, another one, another attribute that we have was roughness. So again, I press tab, start typing binds. Here it is. And if you remember, it is called parm underscore ro if so if you remember the parm ro will go from left to right from white to black which means from one to zero which means from rough to shiny okay let's um Let's see our assumptions if there are any true. So I connect the parm RO to roughness. 
and um, we will see. Oh well, everything is correct. Everything that was on the right became very shiny. Everything that is on the left, as you can see, it has very blurred, very rough reflections. Everything on the right, super shiny. So there you go. Obviously, you can create any attributes on your geometry you want. You can drive with those any attributes in the shader. You can multiply it or just, you know, use for roughness. For example, uh, if you want to create some sort of letter stamping effects, you can, uh, let's say, create, uh, f create uh, some word using the font sub. You can boolean it. You can create the resulting geometry can append the attribute inside the boolean. You can create some attribute and you can use that attribute to uh, control the roughness, for example. So it will look like like a business card that has some sort of more rough part on it. Something will be more shiny, something will be more rough. I think you understand what I'm talking here. So this is it. Um, as a final thing, nothing really uh, super serious or something to talk about is that I think uh, whenever you're copying, whenever you're copying anything to your copies, do not forget to create, I mean, to pack the inst uh, pack an instance any geometry that, that you have. Otherwise, you will be actually having geometry. And if you pack and instance your things, they will be evaluated just once and everything will be just instantiated. So this means you can render things like a lot of buildings, a lot of trees, a lot of uh, maybe geometry based particles. They will not take like terabytes of RAM but actually it will be really manageable to render. So that's pretty much it. I think we are done with mostly everything I wanted to talk in the mantra uh, rendering shading section. Um, let me know what you think and stay tuned for more. We absolutely will have more, especially considering the very fact that there, is, there will be a new rendering engine that's called Karma and it will be used in native and it will also introduce new context that will called LAPS for, I think, light operations, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it will introduce new workflows, new ways of set up your geometry, new ways of building the scenes, which is actually, imp it will be improvements over what we are currently having in Houdini 17.5. So hopefully um, stick, you can stick around and see what's what. And uh, if you are into learning things like that, you are at the right place. This is Arise Works. Thanks for watching and see you later.